This video is a guide to which photos to look for to sell and how to keyword them from amongst the sort of photos that you're likely to find cheaply and easily. I'll go through Five. different types to below be on the lookout for. There are absolutely old photos that will sell for big bucks, but you won't come across these that often, honestly, unless you happen to buy a lot from someone who doesn't know what they have and you do the research and have the discerning eye to find a gem amongst them. So this video is more about the bread and butter photos. If there's something that you have good access to and enjoy looking at, sorting and selling, then this is for you. <laughs> and when I say bread and butter, you can interpret that how you will within your own business model. You could sell photos for higher prices and be prepared for longer tail weights to sell them and make more profit. Or you could uh, keep them cheap and go for volume and or fast sales or something else. So I'll be showing you photos that have sold on eBay recently. A few are my sales, but most are just random examples of what I'm talking about. You'll note that some of them sold for pretty low amounts and I want to address why that is. Firstly, People underprice things at times. You'll see that a lot of these photos are buy it now sales and the given price is something like $3. Aim higher, <laughs> aim higher friends. At least if you're gonna sell something for $3, make it during some kind of markdown sale that you're using to purposely liquidate things after they've been kicking around way too long. Secondly, a lot of these photos were sold as auctions with really low starting prices. And unless you have one of the aforementioned amazing big bucks kind of rare photos, and even then, maybe not, you shouldn't sell photos on auction. There are so many available and they're just not the sort of thing people are going to get into bidding wars over. They're almost always going to sell for the starting price. And thirdly, sometimes things just don't get found. Without getting into the gnarly minutia of eBay search, we'll just say that there are a lot of sellers whose items are not seen by the right potential buyers often enough to move them quickly or well. Fourthly, <laughs> the keywords they've used may not be optimal or they might outright suck. In poking around to prep for this video, I saw a lot of examples of this and I found at least one seller who uses the exact same title and keywords for every photo they list in a certain genre, whether or not every particular in those keywords applies to a given photo or not. And aside from the fact that that is blatant keyword stuffing, <laughs> It's also not helping the right people find what they want. Lastly, beauty can be in the eye of the beholder. Maybe that weird photo Polaroid of a nun with a car that you think is really funny <laughs> doesn't tickle anyone else's fancy. It happens. All that said, if you want to sell some bread and butter, old vintage and antique photos, here are five photos to keep in mind. A type you find a lot is a studio portrait or even a snapshot of a kid or a grown up with their pet. I find they sell pretty well, especially if the pet is really cute. And keywords for these kind of pet photos that I would try to get in are what the breed of the animal is. 
you want to get in the date if you can. This person has done that. Um, I'd say this is definitely 20s. So if you know it's the 20s, then that's probably going to be antique or close enough. Uh, so I would put antique and get rid of vintage. Photos, good word to have. Portraits, a pretty good word to have. I don't know if animal is necessary. Pet is okay. Child's okay. I might try like cute kid, cute girl, something like that. Here's a photo of just a dog, obviously. This is a little later. I'd say this is mid-century, 40s, 50s, 60s maybe. So don't type your title in all caps. It's hard to read and is shouty. <laughs> um, I would get the type of dog in there. Get in that it is mid-century photo. Um, we don't really need old. Vintage would be good. Vintage photo, snapshot, those are all okay words. Um, I kind of like handsome, though I don't know that anyone would search for that. I think they might, they might catch the eye when scanning through pictures with their titles. Um, but having the, the breed in there would be key, and I would put that right up at the front. Definitely something that fanciers of that kind of dog would be looking for. And I, I want to say dignified. <laughs> Not that that's something people would search for, but it just looks very dignified to me, he or she. Here we have an older photo. This is 19th century, and what's really great about this is that it's a carte de visite, or CDV, which is the kind of photo people had taken of themselves, men and women and children, to give out to friends or leave when visiting. And It's super cool that somebody had a CDV taken of their dog. Um, so I would definitely get CDV in there, or carte de visite, or both. Um, it's definitely antique, that's good. We don't need great and old. I would try to get the type of dog, either by breed or description. Portrait is good because it's unusual to have a, a formal portrait of a dog. Um, yeah, and get, get some date in there, 19th century. You could probably narrow it down to a decade but we'll just, we can say 19th century for this one. This I like because there's this specific kind of dog that's kind of unusual, at least in the US, has a specific place and we can date this pretty specifically due to her outfit. So again, don't type this in all caps. Um, we don't need that it's the woman's, women's, sleuth hound that doesn't even make sense it doesn't have to be just dogs obviously we have a parakeet in this one so i would definitely get rid of pet bird and put in parakeet or budgie or both um 50s is good original i wouldn't bother with in the title especially for 1950s unless it was something that really seems like you would reproduce in math on mass and it's interesting that it's original that can just go in the item specifics um snapshots okay because it implies a certain candidness that is evident here just a dog without a person this is great it's got it's got you know pathos i would try to get the type of dog in i don't think this is readily identifiable but maybe big mixed breed dog holding stuffed bunny toy snapshot um this is looks kind of mid-century as well oh let's see what it says 43 okay <laughs> it's a great photo uh, another sort of typical portrait type man in the striped overalls is is good it indicates something about his status you know his social status and you'll notice a lot of people have these pretty obtrusive watermarks and I understand why they do that because they don't want people to steal their images, reproduce them and make money off it. However, I, you know, if you were bent on that, I really don't see that photoshopping out this watermark is any more tedious than flattening the image and, you know, color correcting it and making sure it's the right 
resolution, which it doesn't really look like it is for uh, good reproduction. So I think these over exuberant watermarks are, are, are a little bit much. I mean, if you feel really strongly about it, maybe something a little less obtrusive. You'll see some really bad ones. Again, here's another specific type of dog, Boston Terrier, which they have in caps, kind of like that. Um, I don't think by Boston Terrier makes much sense. So, and the, this capitalization situation is super weird. And so is this tilde and the, the uh, asterisk, all of that stuff is kind of garbagey. So I would not use it. Could be mid twenties. So you got the sailor suit, the aspect ratio. These, a lot of photos from this era are kind of this, uh, TikTok <laughs> long, tall aspect ratio. And also right outside the front door, like there wasn't enough light inside. So you go outside on the front porch or in the alley or whatever and take a photo very common in the tens and twenties. There's a raccoon. This is a rabbit <laughs> or two. And of course cats. I, I didn't show enough cats, but definitely cat photos will sell people with cats, cats with cats, cats by themselves. Cats being naughty, as they often are. I like black cat, playful kitty. I mean, most of these keywords are okay. They're just kind of um, randomly stacked. And I think this is probably whoa, 20s, 30s? Hard to say. Might be up to the 50s. I might just put in there like mid-century in some sort of vague way or 20th early 20th century, something like that. So that's the pets, cars and motorcycles. It's probably pretty obvious that cool photos of old cars can sell, but there's a wide variety of kinds of uh, photos of old cars. And also uh, motorcycles fit in that same sort of genre. And also we're going to add bikes, <laughs> even though they're a little different um, and are probably collected by different people for different reasons. For cars, um, great keywords are if you can tell what type of car it is, any, anything about that, the, even, you know, the manufacturer, the make, the model, the year, the approximate year, the place, those are all good. Here's some later ones. Um, this is a known type of car and it's, you know, a Ferrari, which is, I'm sure this car is very impressive and important for some reason. I don't know much about cars, I have to say, but knowing exactly what kind this is and or the year, the model, all that, um, don't need a period in there. And I might put in classic car rather than old car. Here we have the kind of car, the, oh, buy the suburban car. See, buy always confuses me, like as if they'd authored it. I, I mean, I might just get rid of buy the, take out the parens and write L-I-C, C-V-C, if, if, if it's important to have the license plate, which I'm not sure, but maybe it is. Here's another one. Um, they have the the model, the make. Um, I would take out the periods. The question mark with the place is fine. Um, I might put in flood. It's like what, 40s, 50s, early 50s. So yeah, I'd get a year in there. Um, 1914. <laughs> SH photo. What's that? Is that the... I don't know what that's about. But this is... We have a license plate. We have a state. We have a kind of car. They have the model, dealer plate. These are all good. I, I don't know what this means and if it's important. Normally I would think it was the seller's name and they're known. So they put that in there. But it doesn't seem to be, so I'm not sure. I don't know if side view is as important as something like some other spec, like two door or um, white wall tires or whatever. I don't, I don't know what the specifics would be, but if you did, you could put them in. Another genre, very popular, 
women posing by cars, also men posing by cars. I don't know why Thrift Picker puts that stuff there, but we'll just assume it's something they know and we don't. Um, beautiful woman, pretty lovely lady, poses cool old car 1949. So I would get rid of all these like loaded on synonyms, I think, and put what kind of car this is, which I'm sure is evident from this view. X kind of car, California plates, beautiful woman, suburban street. Here's another one, similar deal. Here we have a man with this car. Military uniform's good. I don't know what this is about. Uh, we're gonna, this is the same seller. We're gonna just ignore that. Um, I don't know that found photo is that relevant in this case. See, I usually use found photo when it's something really random and peculiar. And often if I've just literally like found it by itself <laughs> somewhere weird. I mean, I know that doesn't matter, but the fact that this is a found photo, I don't think that's good for this one. Kids and cars. So that's kind of funny. And I, they have a specific type of car, which I would put first, um, boy, old photo. So I might put Fiat Zastava 750, little kid driving, something like that. Um, I don't know that you need the size in the title. That's not something people search for. This is probably their stock number. Another overlap to another topic, uh, racing car racing, horse racing, bicycle racing, all kinds of racing. Um, so this is a little bit out of the, I mean, the topic at hand doesn't really include famous people because we're assuming that we might not, you know, be able to find those. In this case, this does look like just a snapshot, albeit a really good one. I don't they had really the correct lens to capture this. I might put like amateur photo if it is, or um, journalist photo if it isn't, or something about that. Another sort of genre of car photos is kitschy cars in front of <laughs> places, recognizable places. This is this is a department store that was common in the Northeast the US. There's a certain age of cars like 70s, 80s that now look kind of kitschy so and just the color of this photo um, 1979. Yeah so these photos with that are square color with the rounded edges and this kind of color quality often horribly faded and sort of turning bland. Um, these are from the late 70s and through the 80s they're from those 126 cameras like the instamatic um they're just little point and shoot cheap cameras they had the 126 cartridge film that you just drop in it's supposed to be easier than 35 millimeter but they usually only had like 12 photos per roll so it's kind of a bummer motorcycle um this is another great genre uh women on motorcycles <laughs> pretty biker girl we could color that i suppose try to get the kind of motorcycle or even I don't even if you don't know the brand like whatever this kind is with the small wheel is a chopper or something Let's see another motorcycle with a sidecar 1930s man with pipe those are all good um, here's another one again knowing what this vehicle is more exactly uh, the dates good <laughs> it's a funny photo another one and you can see like we're getting newer oh this is a polaroid okay so this is actually a polaroid land camera photo which are the ones where you take it out and take the paper off and they came in color and black and white but they're this form factor and this is kind of typical of the colors of, of one of the kinds of film um oh and this kind of back Kind of gives it away too <laughs> it's like a you could like mount them on these cardboard things um polaroid land photo i so i might get polaroid land 
photo in there just because that is indicative of the era more than like as opposed to a polaroid instant photo where it develops inside the shaky shaky thing other than that the kind of motorcycle shirtless man maybe contact sheets what these are is if you are taking photos in a film camera <laughs> and you develop your negatives and then you want to get a little thumbnail of what each shot looks like to decide if you're going to develop them full size or use them in a newspaper or magazine or whatever if you're a professional photographer you, or you want to show them to your editor. So these are mostly used by professional photographers, photojournalists, artists, and people who are doing their own darkroom work. And so I think that contact sheets are something that you could find that have famous people in them more so than just a photo, unless it's a mass produced sort of press photo type thing or like a collectible. And the reason being is that to some degree, contact sheets are pretty ephemeral, pretty disposable part of the photographic process. Of course, you know, many photographers keep them for reference or so they know what's on a roll of film, but you know, there's extra copies, they're the ones they give to the editor, and then there's like, you know, newspapers that go out of business and sell all their stuff in an estate sale, including a big pile of contact sheets. It's something you could find, and you'll see just on this general page of them that there's a lot of um, sports, and you'll see the ones that are circled. What's also kind of interesting about these, and this is an aside, but is that you're just shooting one piece of photographic paper with all the frames from the roll of negatives, and they might need to be exposed differently when you develop them, like uh, one, you know, as a one-off. So you might see, you know, some overexposed and some underexposed on this one sheet because you're just using a sort of lowest common denominator development time, exposure time to make this contact sheet something utilitarian. And then when you go and you want to develop, say, this darker photo, you would brighten it up when it was by itself or this bright one, you would, you know, tweak the contrast or whatever. Things you might find, well, there's, there's um, music like here's Survivor, uh, any kind of famous people, um, actors, actresses, whatever, a lot of sports. And what's cool is that sports people are often numbered so you can figure out who they are, what team they play for, because they're labeled. A model shot of some sort, whether this is about the car or the guy, I do not know, but oh look, there's more than one page of these but lots of models, lots of, um, uh, shall we say, risque models, those sell very well. <laughs> we have um, World Series Parade, so these can be color or black and white. This is one I sold recently, and it's obviously a golf tournament. I know nothing about it. I could kind of date it from the clothes to the 60s, but I don't know if these people are famous, if this is an important tournament, if this is like dad goes golfing and someone takes pictures. Though these do appear to be professional photos and also this, these large frames that are square um, indicate that they were taken using a fairly professional camera. And here's the sort of uh, beefcake type things I was alluding to. They come in men and women. The next photo bolo is red border Kodachrome slides. And this is not to say there aren't other kinds of slides that will also sell or do well, but specifically be on the lookout for these kind. They say Kodachrome and they literally have a red border. And those are keywords, red border Kodachrome. They're made by Kodak, uh, which is a less important keyword, but not bad. Um, they are mid-century, uh, mostly from the 
50s I think and just in general these do well they really maintain their color well and they have really nice color a lot of slides were very fugitive like the color just went and they, they're all faded and red and stuff but Kodachromes look really good still and the color is pretty spectacular so and the level of detail there's a lot of things that photography people like about them so this is literally what they look like and we'll look at what they can contain look at this person just is selling these for 40 bucks without showing you anything about what's on them just on the basis of them being a hundred red border chromes. that's cool um they've sold two they have three available <laughs> okay so All right, here's another lot someone's selling or sold and it's 750 plus 1950s Kodachrome red side. Well, put you should put red border Kodachrome. So that's pretty interesting topic actually. Um, I'm surprised this didn't sell for more. Let's look at them. <laughs> this is not backing up my <laughs> statement that the color is really awesome. These all look like they're overexposed with too much flash. See, some of these, like I might have tried to sell that by itself. Some of these, or that, or that, a lot of these they should have listed separately, like gas station, the old station wagon, kids in costumes, that's another one. A lot of these I would have sold by themselves. And this is an overlap with another topic, which is not covered in this video but trains very collectible and this person just um, either scanned or photographed and cropped this one right in and they say just Kodachrome original so we don't know if this is a red border or not there are Kodachrome slides that are not red border also have good color usually but I would have included that if it is the date on the slide is 1992 so that's probably not a red border Kodachrome actually so that's not a good example for this video, but um, the way they've shown it is, I would also just include a picture of the whole thing. And also you can see the color here is really nice, even though this is a later version of Kodachrome. Ugh, look at that, that watermark. But planes, cars, airport, it says all kinds of cool stuff going on in it don't know why that's there I wouldn't put it there because presumably this is their skew I don't know if this is what that is this part should all go up front um, maybe some of the car types airplane types maybe what airport is it I bet you could figure that out this is a nice one uh, double rainbow it's very moody and 1940s but I would show the actual a picture of the actual slide as well as the scan I know why people put their their um, skew in the title because it makes it easier to find things but it's really kind of obtrusive I might not do that I um, save some space I mean you know in take out in take out the comma double rainbow suburban houses red border red border kodachrome slide 1940s if it is a red border it might not be anything unusual it's always great this is like such a this this title is as cluttered as this photo <laughs> sorry i'm being rude make it easy for your people to read it and to find things and to like get rid of this weird all this weird punctuation Here's another um, overlap that we're going to talk about later, but Taiwan is another thing to look for here. They have a nice scan and they have the act a picture of the slide. And that's the other side of it where it's labeled and dated. And you could put the real date in. This one is another good overlappy one. We got uh, airline, airport, Hawaii. I think Hawaii is a good bolo for slides. I just sold some Hawaii 
Kodachromes that did okay. Um, and again, they have the nice scan and the photo of the slide. You don't have to have a scan. You could take a close-up photo with your cell phone like this with the slide up to the light and crop it nicely and it'll look the same. Occupational photos. And that is the key keyword, occupational photos. As you might imagine, these are photos of people at their occupation. They can also be just the workplace without the people, but usually they're the people in the workplace or in the uniform of the workplace or otherwise performing the work in some way. We've got bakers. I would put probably bakers, occupational photo, CDV, bakery, Victorian, Victorian bakery, antique, something like that. Here's a machinist's shop. Uh, we got some people working here. I don't necessarily need the, the size in there. I might just put that it's a cabinet card photo rather than having the mounted. Um, late 1900s, get that in there. Um, I might, I mean, can we figure out like what, what they're making here <laughs> or what these machines are or anything about what it says in there? Those could be good keywords. Dressmaker shop, um, dressmaker clothing work, country store shop, occupational interior, vintage photo. I, again, we could date this to 1920 maybe. I'll look at their hair more closely to figure it out, but their their hemlines are saying 1918, 1920 to me, maybe. Could get that stuff in there, not use all all caps. You know, you know the drill. Flight attendant, <laughs> stewardess. Uh, it's great they have the airline in here, the date, um, air stairs, <laughs> boarding stairs. Yeah, it's got some good words in there. 1946. Here we have an older one. House made woman poses as a broom and dustpan. Yeah, this one's interesting because this is like a studio shot, but she's brought her tools of occupation with her. The date. Another machine shop. I might mention that there is a little kid in there. Hopefully, he is not working. 1800s is a safe bet, but I might say like late or 18. Oh, can we see in this calendar what year it is? Oh, I wish we could, but I'd say this is like turn of the century, 1900. Hard to say exactly. Uh, milkman. I've sold a lot of Milkman photos. It's very like nostalgic thing for people and like the names of the companies. I think like they're around for a long time within people's memory or their grandma's memory or whatever. So we got some overlap here with a cute dog. I might put something about these signs in here. I wish we could see what brand of milk truck this was, but I don't think we can. Might put in there's the milk can behind him. Be cool if you could identify where this was based on these signs here. May or may not be possible. But yeah, milkman stuff is good. Dairy, dairy, I guess we call it. Deli store butcher shop. That's a great photo. I mean, coming from a vegan, but yeah, it's a great, great photo. And their mustaches are awesome. Um, 1870s. Yeah, so this one is even damaged, but it's still, you get the, you get the gist. <laughs> Barber shop. That's a great one. Unless six chairs, this is the name, the name of the barber shop. I don't think I would put that first, but maybe it is. And we already talked about this mounted business. This is another overlap thing. Firemen, anything related to firefighting and fire departments. Great topic for photos. Um, but this one is occupational in just that he is wearing his uniform. And that's another overlap, uniforms but we'll get to that eventually. I might put some more info in here if I could eke any out. I feel like this is, I maybe need to see it in person to know exactly what kind of photo it is, but it's somewhere between like 
1890 and 1925 <laughs> at, at the broadest. Maybe portrait can we tell where he's from? Probably not. And here is a popcorn and peanut wagon vendor. Um, this is great with the signs and everything. I don't know if we can tell what city this is. I mean, Boston, Chicago, New York, I don't know, Brooklyn. But if we could, that would be great. Um, maybe based on these signs back here, and I like that it's wagon. I might put something about how it, the street scene, subway, elevated subway or whatever. I would put vendor rather than salesman, get rid of all this punctuation. You know what I'm going to say. Here's a shoe shop. This is really nice. I like that they got shoe repair shop and cobbler and interior occupational photograph and they got the place. Look at that shoe. <laughs> All right, that's what we're gonna cover for today because it takes me forever to talk about these apparently. So we're going to cap it at five and I will do some more of these videos. If there's interest, I have a list of many, many more photo bolos. And in the meantime, before I make those, if I do, if you want them, you can check out some other videos of mine about photography. Thanks!